Hello, everyone. Today, we delve into a story that resonates as a resounding warning in the world of finance. Imagine a single man, at the heart of a bold strategy, facing one of the most devastating crises of the century. This saga, which shook the foundations of Wall Street, revolves around a controversial figure, Howie Hubler. His name evokes both genius and monumental error, a dichotomy that reminds us how unpredictable and ruthless the financial markets can be. As we prepare to unveil the layers of this complex story, brace yourselves for a fascinating journey through the twists and turns of finance, where a single bet can change the course of history. Without further ado, let's dive right into the heart of the matter. Let's get started. To fully grasp the story of Howie Hubler and the 2008 financial crisis, it's essential to first delve into the economic and financial atmosphere of the time. Let's go back to the early years of the 21st century. Back then, the world was witnessing a period of relative economic prosperity. Stock markets were experiencing sustained growth, and the real estate sector, especially in the United States, was booming. This era was marked by increased investor confidence, fueled by favorable monetary policies and an abundance of liquidity. Banks and other financial institutions, taking advantage of this favorable situation, began offering mortgage loans under increasingly flexible conditions, often to less solvent borrowers. These loans were then bundled and transformed into complex financial products, sold to investors worldwide. However, beneath this prosperous surface, warning signs were visible. The rapid increase in real estate prices and the proliferation of high-risk mortgage loans began to worry some experts, who warned of a potential real estate bubble. Yet, these concerns were often overshadowed by the prevailing optimism and the continuation of economic growth. It was in this setting of apparent prosperity and underlying risks that Howie Hubler made a remarkable entrance. His career took off at Morgan Stanley, a financial giant, where he joined a fixed income division as a bond trader in the 1990s. When 2003 arrived, Morgan Stanley, sensing opportunities in a faltering mortgage market, innovated with the creation of a novel derivative product, the credit default swap, designed to bet against poor quality subprime mortgage bonds. Hubler, with his strategic mindset and audacity, was then chosen to lead a nascent team, tasked with short-selling these risky mortgage loans. Hubler's initial successes in this area soon made waves. His tactic of short-selling subprime bonds, while also playing on their sale, revealed an extraordinary talent for financial speculation, earning him a meteoric rise. In 2006, he reached the pinnacle of his art by being promoted to head the global proprietary credit group at Morgan Stanley. This new role marked a point of no return in his career. At the helm of the GPCG, Hubler orchestrated trading strategies of unprecedented complexity and risk, juggling colossal sums of money. In this function, combining power and influence, Hubler devised strategies that would make him an emblematic figure, but would also precipitate one of the greatest financial catastrophes in modern history. Indeed, as the head of the global proprietary credit group, Hubler implemented a particularly innovative trading approach. He orchestrated the sale of credit default swaps on AAA-rated collateralized debt obligations. These CDOs, considered very safe and nearly infallible investments, were at the heart of his strategy. Meanwhile, seeking to hedge against any downturn in the real estate market, Hubler also bought CDs on high-risk mortgages. However, behind this facade of sophistication and financial innovation, a critical error was looming. The CDOs, supposed to be the safety pillar in Hubler's strategy, actually contained a significant portion of subprime mortgages, exactly the type of risky loans he sought to avoid. This lack of understanding of the products he was insuring was a grave mistake, leaving Hubler and his team in a far more vulnerable position than anticipated. The irony of the situation was that, despite market warnings and early signs, Hubler remained firmly convinced of the solidity of his strategy. His confidence in his financial models and market analyses was such that he continually downplayed, even ignored, the growing risks to which his team and he were exposed. This assurance then led to a series of decisions that would soon prove disastrous. And indeed, as the real estate market began to wobble, Hubler's strategies were put to a severe test. The CDOs, once revered for their stability, were rapidly losing their value, undermining the foundations on which Hubler had built his financial empire. Despite this devaluation, he refused to acknowledge the extent of the problem, clinging to the hope that the market would recover. But the market reality was relentless, and the fall in CDO prices only accelerated, dragging Morgan Stanley into a dangerous financial spiral. 
Faced with such a situation, Morgan Stanley's risk management team took the initiative to subject Hubler's portfolio to a comprehensive banking stress test. This test, crucial in assessing the viability of Hubler's strategies under extreme market conditions, revealed alarming truths. When the scenario simulated a mortgage default rate of 6%, already a historically high level, the portfolio appeared to hold up. However, when the conditions were exacerbated to a default rate of 10%, the reality proved much darker, initial optimistic projections turned into a potential catastrophic loss of $2.7 billion. Confronted with these worrying results, Hubler reacted with a mix of denial and unwavering confidence. Despite clear evidence of significant vulnerabilities in his strategies, he categorically rejected the idea that such levels of default could occur. His belief that financial models and market analyses supported the solidity of his position clouded his judgment. This misguided assurance, coupled with an underestimation of the increased risks, hindered Hubler's ability to effectively respond to the evolving situation. In this context of stubborn denial, the real estate market showed no mercy. The abrupt and unexpected fall of this sector was putting Hubler's trading strategies to an unprecedented test. In the midst of this financial storm, subprime mortgages were becoming increasingly toxic. The growing deterioration threatened to collapse the entire system meticulously built by Hubler, like a domino ready to topple the whole structure. In this changing financial landscape, Morgan Stanley's relationships with its CD's counterparties were dangerously strained. Faced with the collapse of CDO values, they began demanding adjustments and compensations, in line with the terms of their agreements. But Hubler, anchored in his initial beliefs, stubbornly refused to accept the devaluation of these assets. His resistance to this increasingly unstable market reality not only exacerbated tensions with the counterparties but also fueled the financial risks Morgan Stanley was now exposed to. This tug of war between Hubler's vision and market demands was turning into a financial battlefield, where each decision could have irreversible consequences for the bank's financial future. As the duel between Hubler's convictions and the merciless reality of the market turned into a true financial battleground, Morgan Stanley's management was forced to step into the arena. The time had come to face the devastating consequences of Hubler's bold choices. And it's safe to say they were considerable. Indeed, the numbers speak for themselves. The Hubler Group was responsible for a staggering loss of $9 billion. It was like a financial earthquake, shaking not just Morgan Stanley but the entire Wall Street, marking this episode as the fourth largest individual trading loss in history. But that wasn't the worst of it. Beyond these astonishing losses of the Hubler Group, Morgan Stanley as a whole suffered total losses of $58 billion during the financial crisis. Faced with this catastrophic situation, the bank found itself on the brink of financial collapse. In a desperate move to stay afloat, it was forced to turn to the US government. Thus, in a scenario hardly imaginable just a few years earlier, Morgan Stanley borrowed a colossal sum of $107.3 billion as part of the US bank's bailout plan. As for Howie Hubler, his journey at Morgan Stanley took an unexpected turn in October 2007. The reason? Well, faced with the abyssal losses generated by his strategies, the bank, aware of its part in approving these risky maneuvers, naturally had to act. But instead of firing him, which could have implied acknowledgement of its own responsibility in endorsing his errors, Morgan Stanley chose to allow Hubler to resign. This decision, while facilitating a less tumultuous exit for Hubler, raised questions about the ease with which he got off. In the wake of this decision, Hubler left the bank, not empty-handed, but with a departure indemnity of $10 million. This amount, astonishingly high considering the astronomical financial losses he had caused, reinforced the impression that he had almost escaped unscathed from the storm he had unleashed. Indeed, this departure, far from highlighting the severe repercussions of his strategies, rather seemed to attest to a surprisingly lenient outcome for the one who had been at the heart of one of the greatest financial crises of the time. Anyway, Hubler's story does not stop with this questionable exit from the Wall Street stage. Indeed, in 2008, marking a surprising turn, Hubler resurfaced in the financial world, but this time in a new light. He founded the Loan Value Group, an audacious company that worked hand-in-hand -hand with mortgage lenders. This professional shift was significant. Hubler moved from being a craftsman of complex financial products to tackling the problems of borrowers in difficulty, often arising from the same crisis he had once contributed to creating. Thus ends, at least for now, the tumultuous chapter of Howie Hubler's career, 
a story that reminds us of the subtleties and unexpected paradoxes of the world of finance.